All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Shanda Wright. I'm sure we've met. And if we haven't, it's such a pleasure. I actually have really noticed myself as well as other people. There's a few things that are coming up for me and for the people in my circle these days is that we're craving connection and we're craving more ways to make our money, make us money. Because I don't know about you, but this concept of retirement like 40 year deal, like 5% a year, like barely beating or not beating inflation is not a thing. So what I wanted to do is really come and connect with you, take this opportunity to, you know, meet and connect. And at the end, anyone who engages with this, I would love to put you in a draw for a Starbucks because I, like I said, I'm looking for excuses to connect. So we're going to talk about the different ways that you can put your money to work for you when you get, that's my puppies, very excited. <laughs> so when we put our money to work for us, things are different, but how, how do you get that next level out of your money? How do you put your money to work for you in a way that is profitable? Well, there's a ton of different markets and I'm actually going to go through them in the order that I personally engaged in them. My mother was in a car accident very young and couldn't retire with enough money. So I've been on a mission to learn compound interest since I was about 14 years old. So the first thing that I did was get into the stock market and I utilized mutual funds, GICs, individual stocks and ETFs. And those are all different types of contracts for ways that you can purchase um, securities inside the stock market. Okay. And they, sometimes they're in the financial market, but nonetheless, nonetheless, this doesn't matter. The moral of the story is, is that you are purchasing a general fund or you are purchasing, um, a group of information or a group of investments. Okay. Even if you're buying an individual stock, you're investing into that company. So the way that this works and what's going on with this part of the market right now, is that they've been printing a lot of money. I don't know if you guys know, but they've been printing like trillions of dollars. And what's happened with those trillions of dollars, now some of them went into the hands of business owners and, and people that were um, that are just regular citizens, right? Some of them went into tax breaks. Some of them went into medical. But a lot of it went into places like stock markets and banking. And the reason it did that is because our interest rates are currently at an all-time low, and we actually can't do anything else to stimulate the economy, to push things moving forward. And I can tell you, for me, when the stock market is at an all-time high, when our dollars are at all-time highs, and our unemployment rates don't align with that. Our economic situation doesn't align with that. That's a red flag for me. So when it comes to looking at places and analyzing new ideas of places to invest or to put your money, the stock market and the financial markets really aren't pulling me in at the moment. And that's why is because they're so propped up with inflation. They're just inflated and that's normal. Everything goes through cycles. There's, there's, there's an emotional market cycle that happens with everything. They say in real estate, it's every 10 years. They say in crypto, it's every four or five. You know, every single market has its cycle. And we are at the peak of a market cycle in the stock market and in the financial markets. And that has been the case for actually quite a while, but with the, with the um, increased printing of money, it's, it's really gone to a new height. And then to the next segue, perfect segue into real estate. So I got into real estate. I did my first joint venture deal um, about 10 years ago. And then I got into my own project. I, I got into my own project about nine years ago. And then I had a third project that I took on with, again, a joint venture partner uh, about seven years ago. So I was dealing with multiple properties and that was single family real estate. That was when you purchase a home that you rent out that you make cash flow on. Now, some people, their largest investment is their single family home. And that's not typically considered an investment because you are not, um, uh, there's no cash flow and you're not taxed on it. Like it's a capital gain, right? It, it is a, um, an expense for you and your family. It's not an independent investment that's growing or making money. Now it can go up in value. And obviously that's really cool when that happens. And that requires you to buy low and sell high, which is one of the things that's happening. Also, the real estate market is at an all time high right now. And I think a lot of people, you know, without traveling, they're putting their money into their house, they're upgrading. It's, you know, just changing the priorities that people have, right? So then when we look at the other ways to get into real estate, right? So you can develop land or you can develop a property. 
you can flip a property, you can get into multifamily real estate, or you can partner with multiple um, uh, like joint venture partnerships. There's also Airbnbs and that sort of vacation rental side of real estate. Now, vacation rentals can be passive or they can be very, very, very active. Really depends on the systems you put together. Or oh, do you guys want to meet Choji? Want to meet Choji? This is Choji. Hi, Choji. Mm, yes, this is Choji. So cute. Doesn't he look like the dog from um, The Labyrinth with David Bowie? Do you guys remember that movie? This reminds me of the little, yes. <laughs> so sweet. So, so when it comes to real estate, you absolutely can get into multiple different pieces. And I'm just going to go over the pros and cons because there's no one size fits all for anybody, right? And what's happening right now is I'm getting a lot of questions from people who are like, you know, they're doing quite well in their business, whether that's in construction or maybe they're a real estate agent or maybe they're, you know, they're in some sort of other field that's doing very well. And they're looking for places to take that money off the table, to put it into something that isn't putting it in savings where they're printing it away. And so it's like, where can I go that I have the opportunity to grow my money? Right. And so there's a couple of factors to look at and real estate's a really good one to consider. Okay. So we have, we have uh, single family homes that you rent out. That's a lot of work. It really is. And it's, it's a lot of capital. What I figured out is that it's not so much looking for safe investments. It's looking for the risk to reward. If all of our risk, we risk one to make five, and we don't have to be right even 50% of the time for that to be a good investment. And so obviously you create criteria, the more you learn and the more you do. But one of the things with single family rentals is that it's actually quite a high risk and the likelihood of quadrupling or, or 5Xing your money is very small. And the cash flow, like for me, all it took was a tenant didn't pay rent a couple of months in a row or they wrecked something really drastically and it would drastically affect my cash flow for the year. So it's one of those things that you want to consider. Make sure you have a margin of error. Make sure that you have a ton of capital because obviously you need that. Um, and then look at the taxation of it because I had personally bought my rentals. And so that ended up being a whole nother tax conversation. Definitely talk to accountants before you make decisions like that. Okay. Flipping houses, phenomenal investment. I personally do that in Texas. I think it's a really great market. Indiana is a great market. There's a few others, uh, but like California and British Columbia, <laughs> not, not as ideal. It's harder to find a good deal and it's harder to get the upside and it's harder again to four or five X your money. But you really want to look at what's the risk to reward. And what skill sets and connections do you have, right? Because you have to know some good people to be able to make that happen. But it is another option. And sometimes people partner together where they bring the money or they bring the time and they put these things together, which can be cool. Um, I love multifamily right now. Multifamily is a really, really cool sector. It's a really cool space. And the reason is, is because the cash flow doesn't change whatever the market does. So no matter what the market does up or down, the cash flow stays the same. And actually, when real estate markets go up, rentals tend to go up as well. And when real estate markets go down and foreclosures go up, rental markets go up as well. So multifamily is one of my favorites. Land development, you have to look at the timeline, like how soon is it going to be done and where are we in the market cycle? Um, right now with real estate, we're pretty high. We're pretty high. And the likelihood of doubling or quadrupling your money in the next couple of years, I mean, I don't know the answer to that. And I think it depends on the project and what you're getting into, just like it always does. Um, but I knew a lot of people that bought their house in 2007. And they were in a situation for years and years and years where they actually were going to not make money on that if they sold it. Like they were going to lose money because they bought at a high market. I don't know if you guys know anyone like that, but 2007, it was like a whole thing. Right. And so now when I look at different places to grow my money, not only do I look at risk to reward, but I also look at where is it in the cycle is, is there, are we at the top or are we at the bottom? Right. And so I know a lot of investors right now that are very deep into real estate, but they're not looking to accumulate more. 
right? Because they're like, okay, this is the time where I'm going to liquidate a couple that maybe I didn't want to have. I'm going to take that money off the table and I'm going to wait for a market correction. And it's totally your call. You have to create that criteria for yourself. Um, but a multifamily joint venture partnership is probably one of my favorite ways to make money in real estate because it takes very little time, very little energy. It's very predictable on the scale of things. And it's, it doesn't have the same fluctuation. So that's real estate. Talk to a real estate professional. That is not, I am not a real estate agent and I am definitely not going to give anyone financial advice. I have a lot of experience. Oh, Choji. Oh, Choji. <laughs> so silly. Um, so I, I have experience and I have a lot of people asking questions. And so what I want to do is weigh some pros and cons with you guys. That's all. Uh, well, you, he's howling. Oh my gosh, I can't with you. Okay. So, <laughs> so then I, what happened? There's another sector and it's called commodities. Now, commodities is like gold and silver, technically lumber and oil. Um, but that's where you're actually, it's like the, the salt of the earth, the stuff, the hard stuff you can hold on to. This is a great place for savings because although it fluctuates up and down, the idea that gold is not going to be a valuable asset long term is pretty negligible and they can't print more of it. So in terms of hedging against inflation, uh, Robert Kiyosaki says gold, silver, Bitcoin, and we'll get to Bitcoin in a second. But I just wanted to share that with you because it can be a really great space for um, people looking to hedge inflation and to put savings. Again, do I think that gold is going to 10x in the next year? Probably not. But I mean, I can't imagine. I don't know. I'm not, I do not have a crystal ball if I did. I don't even know. But <laughs> if I did, I would have bought Bitcoin in a cent. That's what I would have done. Um, but that being said, um, gold, silver, those are commodities and great places for savings. Oh my gosh, I can't with this owl. This is the funniest thing. Then we get into crypto and this is a great segue as well. So when it comes to cryptocurrency, what's happening is because they're printing so much money and 60% of the world does not have access to a bank account and a lot of the gaming and um, global contracts that are being executed right now on art and in, in the gaming space or in the graphic artistry space, the current internet cannot actually host that, right? We can't, the current banking system cannot facilitate 100% access to banking. The global banking system cannot facilitate sending money in a matter of minutes across the world. The global, the internet cannot move fast enough for the gaming to operate the way that it needs to for the new games that are happening in real time with virtual reality, right? So these things, the current systems don't work. And so the blockchain is creating a platform, a space where we can send money very quickly. It's already been integrated. It's already been verified. The blockchain does that for us. It also gives a space where there is there's there is capacity for these graphic artistries for these games and then you've got the whole nft side which is creating a little bit more um uh integrity in contracts for exchange of value or exchange of um ownership for art it's it's absolutely moving into real estate it's moving into music like who has the rights to which thing that's where NFTs come in, right? And we think of it as pictures. Yes, it is pictures because it is digital art, um, but it's the NFT is actually the ownership transfer. It's the piece behind that. So an NFT doesn't have to be art. It can be associated with music, it can be associated with a um, with an experience. It can be associated with a membership or you know program or whatever. Hi, Joji. Yeah, so you're going to do the rest of this with me. So crypto is solving a lot of problems, okay? And what I can tell you is there's a couple of good, really cool blue chips that I find very interesting. Um, Bitcoin is a, it's kind of like gold. You know, there's obviously fluctuations in its value, but it's not going anywhere. So when it comes to the value, like it, it's not going anywhere. So for savings, it's really great. But is it going to 100x this year? Probably not. So there's other options, but you have to learn how to, just like with stocks, if you're there, like Warren Buffett is selling Berkshire Hathaway shares, not because he doesn't believe in it, not because he doesn't want it, but because they're way overpriced. So the same thing can happen with Bitcoin. It can be legitimate. It can be one of those things you love. It can be a real project, but it can also not necessarily be on sale. Now, I love sales. So I love it when crypto's in a dip. Um, and when it's in a dip, that just means that it's like, 
means that it's a little low today. It means it's a good deal. It means it's on sale when you hear that. Um, so when you're looking at crypto, when you're looking at stocks, when you're looking at real estate, you got to get an appraisal. You want to talk to an expert. You want to do a market analysis. You wouldn't buy a home without doing an assessment of the neighbor's house or the other houses in the market. Just like you wouldn't do that with crypto. Just like you're not going to not get an appraisal. Right now, some people do. They purchase stocks they don't understand that just because they like the company or they think something's a cool dog or they heard some fancy person tweet about something. That's gambling, which is fine. Feel free to gamble. Gambling is one of the biggest industries in the world. Also, not investing. <laughs> Different things. And so being educated on what to look at, what to prioritize, and what's a legitimate project is really, really, my opinion, the best investment you can make is getting educated on these things. Because when I started putting my money to work for me, I got to learn through mistakes. And now I learn through mentorship. And so I am beyond grateful for the fact that I get to come to connect, to go and work with these people who have the results that I want and are paying it forward to me so that I don't have to make the mistakes and potentially miss out. Right now, over the next five years, what's happening in the cryptocurrency space, there are spaces you can make, you know, you can have passive dividends, you can earn interest, you can become the bank. But there are opportunities to do things like three, four, five, 10, 100 X. There are opportunities like that. How do you find them? That's the question, isn't it? Isn't that the question? So when we go and we find people who have done it before, who have found those projects, who know what to look for and have their finger on the pulse, that's the best investment I've ever made. Um, and so I continue to do whatever it takes to get around more and more and more successful people um, because they have more and more of what I want and they can teach me those things, like how to get in on that stuff. And then, you know, you have to have your own criteria. Right. You have to have your own criteria so that you're not missing out on anything, but also so that you're making your own decisions because there's no one person you can just follow and copy and paste your way to freedom. Like that's not a thing. You got to learn how to think, not just. Yeah, what to think, right? Uh, so with that, those are the different spaces you can put your money to work for you that I have personally studied and gotten into and could give you some pros and cons about. I hope that opens your eyes to some of the things that are happening. And over the next 10 days, I'm going to be doing this coffee thing where we like you know, we do coffee and hopefully I get to connect and make new friends because I'm really feeling a hunger to connect. I feel like there's a lot of um, distance between us and I don't love that. I want to make new friends. I want to make new business colleagues. I want to see you guys win. I want more travel buddies. I want all the things. And I feel like the more that we share and connect together, the better off we will be as a community and as humanity. So um, what I'm doing is each day I'm collecting some names from the people that comment below and follow the directions at the end of each video. And I'll give away coffee. And I'm going to do it after 10 days. And I'll give away 10 coffees. And then if we end up drinking the coffee together, cool. We can have a Zoom, connect. And if not, that's OK, too. Um, I can just send it to you. And it can be a little DM connection. Um, but I really am excited about what's coming in these next 10 days because I've got some really cool little tips and things that I've learned from these people that I've been able to get access to by you know paying for mentorship, by earning mentorship through service, by by proximity, by just meeting friends of friends. It's been uh, pretty special. And so I'll pay it forward. I'd love to connect. Today's homework, today's homework is um, we're going to, I want you to, you know that person that you talk to? Now for me, I like to hang out with people that talk about where they're going, that talk about what's coming up, what we're headed to, what we're creating. Right. And I know that there's people that like to gossip and I know that there's people that like to talk about, you know, what's going on or what happened as opposed to what's going to happen or what's happening. And that's OK. I just really, like I said, want more friends and I want to connect with more like minded people. So what I would love for you to do today's homework is can you tag someone below that you always have those conversations with that you're always talking about what's the next project, what's the next thing? What's the next investment? What's the next trip? What's the next adventure? Um, as opposed to the good old days or, you know, last weekend or whatever, you know, like I, I really want some visionary friends in my life. I want to make new Facebook friends. I want to connect and I want to have coffee with you guys. So that's the homework for today. I will continue to share lots this week. We're going to talk about branding. We're going to talk about debt reduction. We're going to talk about putting our money to work for us. We're going to talk about what's going on with the printing of money and why that should matter to you. We're going to talk about how to retire sooner. We're going to talk about how to be our own authentic self. 
ourselves and not settle for anything less than everything that we want to be and uh, talk about making dynamic connections and going for bigger numbers in terms of business or sales numbers and, uh, you know, really creating some momentum as we go into the end of January. So um, I'm so excited to connect. I will see you tomorrow. And if you got value from this, please like, share, tag one of those friends below. Um, I really appreciate it, each and every one of you. All right, guys, we'll see you later.